Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the latest news from Bahrain Television. The C3 U.S. Arab Business and Healthcare Summit granted today His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa the Lifetime Achievement Award for constant efforts and achievements in all fields, especially in development and respect of religious diversity in Bahrain. His Majesty the King was also lauded for his keenness on enhancing Bahraini-U.S. relations at all levels, setting a model for strategic partnership between countries that is based on clear and strong principles. His Majesty the King deputized the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, to receive the award from former United States Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. A ceremony was held on the occasion and was attended by a number of senior diplomats and media personnel. Addressing the audience, Sheikh Khalid extended His Majesty the King's thanks and appreciation to the C3 Summit and to the prestigious award that enhances relations between countries and their people for the best interests of all. Sheikh Khalid noted that His Majesty the King's wise leadership is based on developing the living conditions of Bahraini citizens through achieving comprehensive economic development and providing the best social services. The Foreign Minister also asserted His Majesty's keen interest on maintaining the Bahraini model that is open to all cultures and respect religious diversity, in addition to bolstering principles of coexistence, tolerance and peace. Meanwhile, Sheikh Khalid stressed the deep-rooted Bahraini-U.S. relations that started 120 years ago when the American Mission Hospital was first established. He further noted that these bilateral ties were developing on all levels, mainly the economic, military and political ones. Sheikh Khalid stated that the military relations between the two friendly countries reinforces their common interests and added that they have become essential for maintaining security in the region. The minister also noted the commercial ties, which have been greatly boosted by a free trade agreement signed in 2005. He affirmed the kingdom will continue to take all measures to create new horizons of cooperation for the benefit of the people of both countries. During his speech, Rabbi Arthur Schneer commended the leadership of His Majesty the King, his achievements on the internal and external levels, and his keenness on spreading the concept of forgiveness. He also commended the religious tolerance of the kingdom. For his part, Kissinger expressed his appreciation for the role the kingdom plays in maintaining security and stability in the region and the world during these troubled times where the international community faces many challenges and threats, such as extremism and terrorism. He lauded Bahrain's keenness in developing its relations with the United States on different levels, as well as its great developmental achievements and its advanced healthcare system. The C3 American Summit seeks to enhance the U.S. relations with Arab countries, organize different activities and conferences concerned with enhancing areas of cooperation, particularly in the fields of health and commerce, and award leading and influential persons. The C3 U.S. Arab Business and Healthcare Summit is underway alongside the United Nations General Assembly in New York. It's an important gathering for the GCC and for Bahrain in particular this year, as His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa is receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award for his support of healthcare in the region and the American Mission Hospital, which, as Marty Johnson reports, is drawing even more interest by businesses interested in relocating to the kingdom. The regulatory environment and market access, and then really the chair. Arab and U.S. business interests engaged in a two-day summit covering economic opportunities in general and the healthcare industry in specific. Former U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, Adam Aroli, says the meetings offer an important message to U.S. business. But when you hear from six ambassadors that this is a place that is together, innovative, safe, secure, and potentially very profitable, that's an important message. Airily led a six-ambassador panel on the changes and challenges of doing business in the Middle East that included current ambassador William Roebuck, discussing one of the most successful of what he calls trade enablers. I think that has proven true. Uh, bilateral investment, for example, between Bahrain and the United States has uh, doubled uh, since the free trade agreement came into force. Um, I think um, Hundreds of uh, millions of dollars uh, in goods and merchandise have been exported by uh, Bahraini and Bahraini located companies into the United States in areas like uh, petrochemicals, um, textiles, 
uh, aluminum products like uh, high tension wires. Um, so overall, I think it's been a success. It's also attracted American companies to Bahrain. One concern being expressed where economic and social change usually takes time. So many young Bahrainis are getting educated that economic opportunities are needed almost immediately. And that's what day one of this summit is about. Expat Del Roosevelt has lived in Manama for 11 years and says now that many companies have built mega projects, there's new opportunity. And those opportunities, I believe, firmly are with SMEs, the small to medium enterprises, because those mega projects use virtually everything in their day to day operations. So anything from knives, forks, uh, to specialized uh, ma uh, machined pieces and things of that nature. So these smaller companies that make up the, the, uh, the needs and the components that these large mega companies need on a daily basis is a great opportunity. Bahrain's trade representative Rose Seeger is already making that pay off for the kingdom. I think small manufacturing is beginning to seriously look at um, the GCC region, specifically Bahrain because of all our additional business advantages and a lot of companies are showing interest in distribution centers for the entire region and that's really exciting for all of us because we need some form of uh, business opportunities that will create jobs and a simple quick way of doing it is a distribution center. Sager has been working with the ERC group plastics manufacturers soon to build a factory in Bahrain. Bahrain was absolutely the perfect place for so many reasons not only that it's the financial gateway to the Middle East but the English is spoken there so it'll be a little easier for us as a startup and there seems to be quite an interest from the king and from everybody we've talked to. And on day two of this conference, the King will receive a special award for his support of business, change, and health care for his people. Reporting for Bahrain TV, I'm Marty Johnson, New York. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Qudubiyah Palace today a number of members of the royal family and senior officials in the kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that efforts to reach the highest quality of government services continue following the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in order to address the aspirations of the people. His Royal Highness went on to stress that Bahrain, with its cadres, economic legislation and its kind people, has the qualifications to be a destination for tourism and investment. His Royal Highness also addressed a number of regional issues, stating the necessity for GCC countries to take collective action in order to face security and economic threats. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Qudubiyah Palace today the former Tanzanian Minister of Lands, Housing and Human Settlements, former UN Under Secretary General of the United Nations and former Executive Director, UN Habitat and Director General of the United Nations Office in Nairobi, Professor Anna Kajumulu Tabai Juka, to present her with His Royal Highness's Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa's Award for Sustainable Development, accompanied with a certificate of appreciation signed by His Royal Highness in recognition of her contributions in supporting sustainable development efforts in many countries across the world. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister congratulated Professor Tibijuka for receiving the award, highlighting the fact that she is highly respected on an international level for her efforts to strengthen cooperation frameworks that serve urban and sustainable development objectives. He hailed her efforts to establish the foundations of a common collective action to achieve noble humanitarian goals and expressed appreciation for her continuous and constructive cooperation. 
His Royal Highness stressed her actions motivate and encourage other people to support development and humanity issues. His Royal Highness added that Bahrain will continue working to build on its previous success in comprehensive and sustainable development and to achieve the 2030 goals through a number of programs that serve the kingdom and its people. For her part, Professor Tibaijuka said she was grateful for the award, adding that she was thankful to His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, for his constant support. She affirmed that the award gave special significance to the efforts of her team in order to achieve the goals of sustainable development and provided an incentive and inspiration to all people to increase their efforts to, in order to achieve human solidarity. She hailed His Royal Highness's award, through which Bahrain has sent a message to the international community, affirming its dedication in meeting the objectives set by the United Nations. She also commended Bahrain's major achievements in sustainable development, accomplished thanks to His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and his wisdom and forward-looking vision for the future. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Qutubiyya Palace today the President of the Association for the Furtherance of Peace, Her Imperial Highness, Archduchess Margaret Hertha, and her husband, Vice President of the Association, Archduke Sander von Habsburg. The Archduchess delivered an invitation to His Royal Highness to attend the Imperial Ceremony on the 21st of October at Schönbrunn Palace in Vienna. The ceremony is being held for the first time in more than 100 years and will be attended by 200 people. The event, which will include the annual reception of the Flame of Peace that will be held on October 22nd. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to Her Imperial Highness and her husband for the generous invitation, which is a reflection of the deep-rooted relations between the two countries. He affirmed the importance of strengthening cooperation between countries and enhancing communication in order to achieve international security, peace and stability. He stressed some countries are facing challenges and conflicts which require allocating the necessary powers and resources to achieve peace and security for all of humanity. His Royal Highness praised the role of the Association of the Furtherance of Peace of Austria in supporting peace, coexistence and cooperation amongst nations, wishing the Association success in achieving their goals. Her Imperial Highness Archduchess Margaret Hertha and her husband Archduke Sandor von Habsburg expressed their appreciation for His Royal Highness's efforts to achieve international peace, stressing that these efforts helped elevate humane conditions. She affirmed His Royal Highness's initiatives for achieving sustainable development motivated many to achieve more creativity, which has contributed to the progress of their countries and praised the achievements of His Royal Highness and his role in supporting international humanitarian work, expressing her hope that His Royal Highness would attend the imperial ceremony. She also pointed out the progress and development witnessed in Bahrain in various fields, wishing the kingdom and its people further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, held a lunch banquet at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in honour of the President of the Association for the Furtherance of Peace, Her Imperial Highness Archduchess Margaret Hertha, her husband, Vice President of the Association, Archduke Sander von Habsburg, and former Minister of Lands, Housing and Human Settlements in Tanzania, former UN Under Secretary General for the United Nations and former Executive Director, UN Habitat and Director General of the United Nations Office at Nairobi, Professor Anna Kajumulu Tabaijuka, in the presence of the members of the royal family, ministers and senior state officials.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today visited the Royal Guards headquarters. His Royal Highness was received by the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Royal Guards Commander, His Highness Brigadier Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Guards Special Forces Commander, His Highness Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and senior officers. The national anthem was then played. قوة الواجب ستة جهاز التفتيش سيدي His Royal Highness then inspected the Guard of Honour, praising the BDF's high level of combat readiness and proficiency, as well as their unwavering commitment and honourable service to the Kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamid. His Royal Highness highlighted the BDF's important role in the Saudi-led coalition in Operation Decisive Storm and Renewal of Hope, which were critical to upholding regional security. His Royal Highness also paid tribute to the servicemen who have lost their lives fighting for the Kingdom's security and stability, proudly recalling the patriotic sacrifices of Bahrain's forefathers in protecting the country and its allies.
سيدي صاحب السمو الملكي الامير سلمان بن حمد ال خليفه ولي العهد نائب القائد الاعلى والنائب الاول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظكم الله اصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعاده ضيوفنا الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سيدي في هذا اليوم يتشرف الحرس الملكي بحضوركم الكريم وبهذه الرعاية الدائمة من لدن سموكم حفظكم الله سيدي يتشرف العميد الركن سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد آل خليفة قائد الحرس الملكي بإلقاء كلمته بهذه المناسبة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. His Highness Brigadier Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa then addressed the audience. In his remarks, His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed his appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his ongoing support to the BDF, which played a significant role in helping the military achieve their advanced military capability. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also underscored the importance of the Kingdom's participation in the Saudi-led coalition to restore legitimacy and order in Yemen, as per His Majesty the King's wise directives. His Highness stressed the ongoing support from His Majesty and the BDF Commander-in-Chief continued to be a source of great motivation for personnel on the front lines as well as those working back on base to develop strategies and enhance the military's combat readiness. His Highness noted that Bahraini troops had achieved a high level of military proficiency that was acknowledged and praised by Allied forces and Arab coalition countries. وسيدي معالي القائد العام وقوة الدفاع الكاملة بأكملها بجميع ضباطها وجميع أفرادها ولله الحمد قامت كل من ذهب إلى اليمن وذهب إلى الحد الجنوبي بكل ومختلف المهام قاموا بأداء مئة بالمئة ويشيد به قوة التحالف من المملكة العربية السعودية ودولة الإمارات سيدي بعد مرور عام من عملياتنا ولله الحمد لا أستطيع في هذه الكلمة وباختصار أن أقول لكم كم مدى الاستفادة التي استفدناها من هذه العملية فائدة كبيرة من ناحية القيادة ومن ناحية الأفراد ومن ناحية العمليات ومن ناحية الإدارة وجميع أمور المراحل الحرب ولله الحمد يا سيدي بعد مرور عام هذه القوة وهذه النخبة تشرف علم مملكة البحرين بين أشقائها من دول التحالف ولله الحمد قاموا بكل ما أوكلوا إليه من مهام بنجاح وسداد وقاموا بخير تمثيل وخير تشريف لبلدهم ولله الحمد بعد عام من هذه العمليات سواء كانت حربية أم إقاثة إنسانية أم إعادة لإعمار اليمن قاموا بكل ما أوكلوا إليه وفي هذا العام أصبحت خارطة الطريق واضحة بما يخص اليمن ومستقبلها وهذا هو الأهم سيدي المدح في وجه الرجال مذمة ولا يمكنني أن أمدح هؤلاء الرجال أمامكم الآن وأمامهم بالذات ولكن تعرفون من هم هؤلاء الرجال هم خير سفراء لبلدهم وسطروا التاريخ بأسمائهم سيدي لا يسعني في الختام إلا أني أشكركم على متابعتكم وحضوركم ميدانيا وإشرافكم وتشريفكم بتقديم الأوسمة لأبنائكم الأبطال شكرا سيدي His Royal Highness then presented medals awarded by His Majesty the King to members of the Royal Guards Special Operations Force in recognition of their devotion and dedicated service during postings in Yemen.
The Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, deputised Deputy Premier Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to open the 10th Middle East Refining and Petrochemicals Exhibition, that's Petrotech 2016, held at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Centre between September the 26th to the 29th. The event was attended by high profile executives and technical experts from refining and marketing organisations from over 30 countries and is considered the the largest gathering of both the oil and gas and manufacturing industries in the Middle East. The Deputy Premier toured the pavilions of the exhibition alongside Oil Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and a number of other ministers. He was informed about the exhibits which include the latest technology and products in the oil refining and petrochemical industries. Sheikh Ali conveyed greetings from His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the participants at the exhibition in which major global and GCC companies as well as oil refining and petrochemical industries experts are participating. He lauded His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's patronage of Petrotech 2016, noting the Premier's constant support. The development of the oil and manufacturing industries encourages an exchange of expertise in the fields of energy and the industries associated with it, with the aim of enhancing the comprehensive development march in the Kingdom and strengthening its competitive potential in attracting various investments. The Deputy Premier asserted the increasing attendance witnessed by the conference it reflects the Kingdom's ability to host specialised events in light of its open economy and outstanding investment atmosphere that have entitled it to be a main centre for regional and international conferences and exhibitions in the region. He asserted that both the oil and gas and manufacturing industries constitute an essential tributary of the national economy within the development strategy adopted by the Kingdom and the countries of the region to diversify income sources and attract investment in these industries in order to increase their revenue. He added that such conferences and exhibitions increase the efficiency of the oil and gas sector in Bahrain, applying modern technology, developing the skills of the sector's affiliates and reflects the Kingdom's distinguished ability in the conference and exhibition industry. The Deputy Premier explained that investment in the industrial sector, especially in the oil, gas and petrochemical industries, is essential in implementing the government's strategy to develop the national economy and diversify sources of income. Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa commended the efforts of the event's organisers, wishing them every success in achieving the goals of the conference. All Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa extended sincere thanks, appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for patronising Petrotech 2016 and lauded the Prime Minister's constant support to the oil and gas sector, citing his personal follow-up and directives in this regard. He also thanked the Deputy Premier for opening the exhibition, calling for the need to take advantage of such international events to develop the oil, gas and petrochemical sector in the Kingdom, as they provide access to various advanced experiences in the fields of refining and petrochemicals. I'm glad to be in the Kingdom of Bahrain. We are here representing uh, Kuwait, Kuwait uh, KBC and its subsidiaries. This uh, event is uh, mainly on the downstream, which is uh, refining and petrochemical. And this is a very important event because most of the mega projects taking place in the industry is in our region. And we are proud, very proud about this. And uh, now the Gulf is becoming the center of the industry so we are attracting the attention of all the regional as well as the international companies this is an excellent opportunity where we can exchange uh, expertise and uh, get appraised about the latest technologies in the downstream business Bahrain Defence Force Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received at BDF headquarters today the Chairman of the Sudanese National Council, Dr. Ibrahim Ahmed Omar, and his accompanying delegation, currently on a visit to the Kingdom, in the presence of the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah. The Commander-in-Chief welcomed the Sudanese delegation, commending the deep-rooted brotherly relations between Bahrain and Sudan, and the development of these relations in all fields.
Education Minister Majid al Nuemi received today Speaker of Sudan's National Assembly, Dr. Ibrahim Ahmed Omar, and his accompanying delegation. The minister affirmed that all achievements made by the ministry is thanks to the wise leadership's continuous support. He delivered a presentation on the Education March of the Kingdom and the National Project initiatives to develop education and training. The minister also presented Bahrain's development of the industrial education in cooperation with UNESCO that was able to benefit 13 countries as a model of curriculum development. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, received the Grand Imam of Al Azhar Al Sharif, Dr. Ahmed Al Tayeb, at Bahrain International Airport today. The Grand Imam is in Bahrain to chair a meeting of the Islamic Council of Elders. The Abu Dhabi based council, which was founded on the 19th of July 2014, is an independent international body comprised of a number of senior Muslim scholars from around the world, headed by the Imam of Al Azhar. The Council aims to achieve peace and coexistence in the Muslim world and fighting sectarianism. In fact, uh, we are very happy to receive Dr. Ahmed al Tayyib, the Sheikh of Azhar. Uh, he is coming today uh, to chair the meeting of uh, the Council of Elders or Majlis al Hukama for, for the Muslims, and it's a council that is uh, mainly concerned to promote uh, moderation and to lead a constructive dialogue based on humanity and the values of, of Islam. And uh, I think it's uh, a good opportunity to have such a meeting to be held in, uh, in Bahrain. Uh, uh, it is uh, uh, something that confirms uh, how Bahrain is uh, promoting uh, uh, moderation and, uh, and it's a part of our effort to stand against any kind of uh, 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 intolerance or, or, or violence or uh, anything that goes be, uh, against uh, the values of Islam. So we are very happy to receive uh, Sheikh Al-Azhar uh, in, in, in Bahrain and we hope that the meeting will be fruitful and carries uh, the real aspirations of people uh, to have uh, the values of Islam really reflected into their uh, life. Under the patronage of the Central Bank of Bahrain, the 20th AIRDC conference was held today, gathering around 300 stakeholders from more than 25 developing countries, insurance industry to chart a new direction for the regional industry under the theme transforming the insurance industry in developing countries. CEO of ARIG Bahrain and chairman of the 20th AIRDC conference organizing committee Yasser Al-Baharna hailed the tremendous efforts of the organizing committee and expressed his aspiration to holding fruitful discussions and an exchange of insurance practices and experiences amongst insurance and reinsurance leaders from different developing economies. The AIRDC is the Association of Insurance and Reinsurance in Developing Country. It holds a meeting every two years in a different uh, country. It's very important for Bahrain to host the 20th uh, conference over here. It signifies the importance of the Middle East, particularly the Gulf GCC countries, in the eyes of the AIRDC. Uh, it brings together almost 300 participants from almost 35 countries. It will put Bahrain on the map in the insurance arena. Like I said in my welcoming remarks, you know, this is actually our 20th anniversary. So, you know, a 20th anniversary is very, very important um, for us. You know, we expect growth, you know, and um, the diversity that comes with the representation from all the three continents. Um, so coming to the Middle East is we are also hoping that, you know, we'll grow our membership base from the Middle East, you know, Africa and Asia. I think uh, we uh, act as a part of the organizers of this event. We work closely with the BIA and the organizing committee. Uh, as we uh, find it, it's important to support such gathering. We understand that uh, this uh, event represents one of the uh, important events for those uh, 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 insurance companies and reinsurance companies in developing countries and I think part of uh, the the role that the CBB could uh, play is to support such events as it will uh, add value in terms of the uh, overall uh, discussion 
in, in the conference as well as uh, discussing uh, various issues of concern in, 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 in insurance services. In light of the Kingdom of Bahrain's growing business capacity and due to the many options available to investors in Bahrain, Ms. Yasmin Jamali, owner of Events Starts Company, initiated a workshop in coordination with the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce to educate business owners and young entrepreneurs on the franchise business arena. More details now in this report with Sarah al -Baraik. Bahrain has taken substantial measures to enact reforms and create the most open, favorable business conditions to make it possible for investors to succeed. Fortunately, by virtue of its strategic location, Bahrain has the advantage of being an ideal gateway to the Gulf. I started, uh, the, as, you, I, as you heard, the chocolate coffee exhibition for some in Bahrain. Then I realized some of Bahrain youth, uh, youth, how they signed the contract or the franchise is not correct or not supporting uh, them the best. That I said, I said it, it's, it's needed to be launched in Bahrain to help youth, to, how to, to, to consult themselves, how to sign it, uh, how to, to go, because the resources in the franchise is not easy to find. Bahrain has come to be the most mature, well-established business hub in the area, providing the most free, open, liberal and transparent environment for businesses and communities. Interesting thing about uh, Bahrain has been always perceived as a lovely city to be in and to visit, and it's att attracting actually most of the uh, people from different parts of the world. Uh, of course, especially the, the 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 Gulf and people from the GCC. So definitely, they're like uh, good attraction for these brands to operate and come, and also for people who have exercised how to invest in in, in Bahrain and how to operate business in Bahrain. Definitely, they would find how. We would say it's like a business-friendly environment they could operate without, with no really much restrictions. The good thing about franchising, it's, uh, it's not only catering what most people think, it's about food and beverage and retail and fashion. Franchising cater almost all the industries, from the oil industry to the media to the banking sectors and all other sectors. And the good thing about it, when you get in a franchise, you get all the package, it's not like you know, getting a name or getting a logo or getting something. It's getting the entire system, the entire know-how, the entire experience, everything. So bringing this experience from any part of the world to any destination like Bahrain we're talking about now, it's of course is going to bring an added value to the, to the society, to the country, to the economy and, and for, for everyone actually. Bahrain is committed to the rule of law free markets and democratic principles, serving the needs of many and above all, ensuring the long-term future prosperity of its people. It's my own coffee shop, we own the brand. Mm -hmm. Cafe Pistachio is a Bahraini brand and it is registered here in Bahrain, registered in GCC. Mm -hmm. Bahrain is very business friendly and any, anyone can start business here without any problem. This is Sarah Break for Bahrain 55. Sam Keen and Art Select held a joint press conference today to reveal the details of the upcoming Art Bahrain Across Borders, that's Art Bab, the exhibition, which will be held in March next year at the Bahrain International Exhibition Centre under the patronage of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women. Art Bab follows the successful debut of the Art Bahrain exhibition last year and the Bahraini artists across borders showing at London's esteemed Victoria and Albert Museum earlier this year. The central pavilion of Art Bab will feature around 100 works from 30 Bahraini artists. There will be an open submissions process from October the 2nd to November the 30th. We have a form, an application form, which, which enables artists of almost all the used medium, be it the regular, can, uh, the regular acrylic paintings, uh, sculpture, photography, installation. So we're giving everybody a chance. Um, uh, the division of the layout is in such a way that we have a pavilion uh, called the Bab Pavilion, which is open to all Bahraini artists. So we're trying to maximize uh, uh, the local showcase, as well as give, uh, we have a full gallery arena where we are going to bring in international galleries. The arts industry 
to create a whole new industry, to develop this is, is very challenging. But this is the first step. Having such a large exhibition that um, displays local talent and also bring international talent inside the country, both makes Bahrain um, the destination for artists in the future, hopefully, but also allows uh, Bahraini artists to think of this as a profession and as a formal economic sector that can contribute to Bahrain's economy. So how to commercialize the mindset and, and the thinking that this can be a money-making industry is very necessary for Tim Keen.